it's me and Mitch, and we're back in the Zoom setup. This feels retro already. God, I've, I've missed it. No, I've not missed this at <laughs> you all. Mitch. I'm sorry, I can't all. lie. <laughs> no, I feel so bad. You guys have all looked really happy and, and proud to be back in the office, and here I am saying, no, no, Zoom calls. We're going no, back to Zoom calls. No, but here you are jumping on the news like an absolute legend on the weekend, so I don't have to do it alone, and there is a lot of very confusing news that we're going to jump straight into this morning, so... <laughs> I guess let's take a look at the headlines. A report is suggesting that WWE have launched a smear campaign against AEW. There was a huge return after months away on last night's SmackDown. And a current WWE champion is set to undergo surgery. Find out who in a bit. Right, so as I said, let's just jump straight in the deep end, Mitch. Um, WWE, AEW, smear campaign. This is... <laughs> this is bonkers, oh isn't God. it? This is... Absolutely mental. So, yeah. as everyone seems to obviously will know, there was a really violent match on Dynamite this mm. past week. Uh, Nick Gage and Chris Jericho. And at one point, Nick Gage used his trademark pizza cutter. And just by pure coincidence, there yep. was then an advert for Domino's Pizza. You and Adam covered it on the news, I think, yesterday. <laughs> yeah, I think so. Uh, obviously, a lot, of, uh, a lot of tweets, a lot of backlash, <clears throat> a lot going on with that. There was, as, as I said, you guys covered that on the news. This has spiralled a bit further um, because mm -hmm. there seemed to be some quotes circulating that Domino's were threatening to pull their ads from AEW. But now it also seems to, to be the case that this may have involved WWE in, in some way, if you want to take it any further. Yeah, so uh, David Bixon's man uh, is, is obviously an investigative journalist in the field of wrestling, and he tends to, to get really into this sort of stuff. And he's reporting that it began to spiral a little bit further when it started uh, with the Front Office Sports article. Uh, now, they dropped an article that claimed Domino's was set to pull ads from Dynamite altogether over the incident. And then the article also falsely claimed that AEW's bloody matches were turning people off their product, something which metrics are proving to be very, very false. Um, but yeah, Bix and Span kind of dug into it, and apparently on Friday, Meltzer strongly uh, implied in the newest newsletter that WWE had planted the story, and Voices of Wrestling, they outright said WWE had tried to do so too. Now, apparently, according to a screenshot shared with Bix and Span, a reporter from a mainstream publication in reaching out about the story, explicitly said that WWE had contacted them about writing an article on the Domino's AEW situation. Now, this comes in spite of the usual insistence that AEW aren't competition, everything's our competition because we're entertainment, but oh my god, it's not beyond them. They've done it before, they've done it in the past, but this is... Ooh. This is absolutely mental. Me and you thought we were coming on on a Saturday morning for a nice, like, easy news Here's story. What on SmackDown, I'm going to go get a pint. <laughs> <laughs> and then suddenly we find this and our minds have been blown. And as you say, yeah. only, only on the uh, uh, quarterly uh, financial call, Vince McMahon explicitly said, AEW's not our competition. And Nick Khan did his whole, well, sleep's our competition. And then literally 24 hours later, we get we get suggestions that WWE are outright trying to uh, smear it's, AEW. Yeah, it, it's just the fact that it, because as, as the article said, and if you want to read in more depth, there is a lot more in the article itself. We just kind of pulled out the, the, the bare bones of it here to explain mm -hmm. it best. But uh, yeah, like the fact that somebody from the wider world of, of like reporting that doesn't really focus on wrestling at all was approached to get involved with this. And it was the front office sports article itself that then led to this, you know, oh, Domino's are pulling their ads and it's all kind of built and built and built. And that only stands to harm AEW's rep, I guess, if it keeps snowballing. So neither company mm. has responded to uh, to probing from Bix and Span. But if anything happens, obviously keep it with us and we'll keep you posted. Bloody... Game of Thrones level stuff this, Mitch. <laughs> <laughs> so on to the more standard weekend news. We have a massive return after a months long absence on last night's Smackdown. Who was it, Mitch? It's boss time. It's boss so time, guys. <laughs> yeah, so for the first time since losing her Smackdown Women's title to Bianca Belair at WrestleMania, Sasha Banks returned to WWE TV. Now, she rocked up while Bianca Belair was being interviewed in the ring about what's next for her, uh, but was interrupted by Carmella, and then Zelina Vega jumped in, uh, and then, you know, it was kind of back and forth. 
And then it, it all just kind of spilled over into uh, her and Vega beating down Bel Air until mm-hmm. Sasha's music hit. And then out she came, saved the day and, and you know, given her a hug. So Sasha's back. Well, then the, we had the tag team match at the end of the night that put, right. uh, put the put the two uh, two teams together. Yeah. Bel Air and Banks won. Banks got the win. And then, oh my days, who saw it coming? Banks turned on Bel Air. <laughs> Backstabber. <laughs> Bank statement. Hold the title aloft. Banks is back. And Banks is a bad guy again, which is well, fantastic. She's I mean, a phenomenal you're gonna bad guy. going to come in and be face and then heal. I mean, Sasha's perfect to do that, isn't she? And and this, at the same time, you know, coming in and then re-establishing that feud, there is so much more, mm. I feel, that her and Bel Air can tell story-wise. On a, on a completely different tangent, is this like the way to get things done in the real world? Because if I attacked Tom in the office next week, would right. we then have a match? If we would we then have a match to determine who hosts Desert Island Graps? Maybe you're gonna have to just kind of feel it out with the other guys there. But I'd, I'd be up for that. That'd be interesting. Yeah, all right. Bit of office fighting. In the office ne- Bit of office fighting, come- Mitch. Oh. I'll get in the office next week. I'll hug Tom and then I'll super kick him, and we'll go from there. Yes, but I'm going to uh, quickly jump over now to a story from Paige, which is somebody we don't really hear a lot from these days when it comes to mm. the, the daily wrestling news. Uh, but on uh, just taking to Twitter, basically Paige informed fans that she's able to squat 185 pounds again and that her neck is feeling awesome. Now, Paige obviously suffered a career-ending injury in 2018 at the age of 28 and, and and it was just very very hard for everybody to come to terms with but she's never mm. really beat around the bush at the fact that she wants to follow in the footsteps of Edge and Daniel Bryan and make that return to the ring and this is such a positive step and she got she went on to wrote you guys I'm getting stronger squatting 185 pounds again I know it's not a ton but it's a big accomplishment for me who was worried to do any gym stuff because of my neck but my neck is feeling so awesome I'm so proud of myself now if Paige is ever able to make it back safely to the ring, I, I think it's a no-brainer. WWE have to do something with Paige, surely. Absolutely, absolutely. I mean, the the biggest shock for me there is that Paige is only 28, but she's been she's been doing it from such a young age, and yeah. her story is such a, an up and down one, but also a feel good one in some ways. And you feel for her having to retire at, at, uh, in 2018, three three yeah. years ago. Um, I'd love to see her back. Oh, yeah, sorry. She was 25 when she was forced to read her. I think I said she was 28, yeah. (laughs) Yeah. But it it was just heartbreaking, wasn't it? And it's something that I think Paige has so much more, as as I said, like about Bel Air and Banks. I think Paige has so much Mm. more to give to WWE and to wrestling fandom as a whole if she's able to return to the ring safely. Yeah, and I think that the main thing is that she is healthy and safe and yeah. able to live life the way she wants to. And she looks like and seems like she's in a really good place. So hopefully yeah. that happens for her in the coming years. Fingers crossed. Returning to last night's SmackDown, Mitch, we got a little bit of a gimmick change. and It's it's so huge. Reginald's gone from being Reginald to being <laughs> Reggie. Woo! It's the biggest gimmick change of the year. Oh my goodness me, it's it's mental. I don't know how we're going to contain our excitement on this one, Sam. So Reggie has gone uh, from being a sommelier for Carmella, pouring her wine and, and you know, all of that, going from being a bit of a lackey to now just dropping his French accent and, and going, call me Reggie. So <laughs> Reggie is, I mean, he's somebody who I was very excited about when he first came in. I know that a lot of people rolled their eyes, but... He's a former Cirque du Soleil performer and watching him do these like step up flips on the stairs and stuff. And it was like, he might not be, you know, like a featured player, but he still can do some amazing things. So I was yeah, quite, he can quite do things that, that other people can't do. He's, he's a really talented guy. But that's it. I was happy to see he kind of stuck around after that story petered out a little bit. Uh, but yeah, Reggie defended the 24-7 championship against Chad Gable last night, proving that the 24-7 championship still exists uh he won by a dq and then said backstage after the match look i'm not from france i'm from st louis missouri i've been a fan of wwe my entire life i saw posting that carmella needed uh sorry i saw a posting that carmella needed a sommelier uh, i thought i can do that but she wanted me to speak french and also speak in a french accent i'm like if i need to do this i certainly can but that was never the goal. My goal was to get a foot into the door, and now I'm the 24-7 champion. Look at me, ma! I'm king of the world! 
lifelong dream. The boyhood dream has come true honestly, for Reggie. Honestly, so long as Reggie's still kept around and starts to get more and more in-ring time, I think he's just going to continue to impress. But keeping it yeah. with uh, SmackDown last night and continuing on a trend that we've seen for multiple weeks now, guess what was backstage at last night's SmackDown? Was it NXT Stars? I think it might have been. It, yeah, was, it, was. it was indeed, Sam. <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to think of something clever to say, but it's a Saturday morning. <laughs> <laughs> well, apparently, according to PW Insider, they reported that Indy Hartwell, Austin Theory, Odyssey Jones and Aaliyah were all backstage at last night's SmackDown show. Uh, and this just continues the trend. You know, it doesn't mean necessarily historically, uh, we've said this before, that... You know, you're going to have those call-ups for definite. But recently, mm. it seems that all the NXT faces that are popping up backstage at SmackDown are kind of getting pushed gently through to the main roster rather quickly. Uh, now, whether this is going to happen for these names, only time will tell. But it's important to note that they are still rocking up on the weekly backstage to SmackDown. Yeah, and I think names like uh, Odyssey Jones in particular are very interesting because reports yeah. are he was uh, he was uh, almost handpicked by Vince McMahon at the Performance Center. Yeah. He's obviously in, involved in the uh, breakout tournament as well. So I think we could see some big things in his future. Absolutely. And finally, uh, in this video, we're going to just go over to Natalia, who we touched upon yesterday having to uh, go through examination after that leg injury. I think she'd hurt her tendons and it was a really, really bad talk on that leg. If you can, mm. I mean, the images are out there, the kind of still frame of, of the incident and her leg is they just the nasty. wrong way. Yeah. Uh, but she took to social media last night just to confirm, just as an update for everybody from the news yesterday, uh, she does need surgery for her ankle injury. Uh, she didn't provide a timetable for her return, but it was reported by Meltzer that she's expecting to be out for a few weeks. So hopefully it's not as serious as it looked, because as I said, it looked like her leg was the wrong way. And I'm like, Ugh. yeah. Uh, but WWE issued a comment on Twitter to say there will be an update regarding this whole thing on the August 2nd episode of WWE Raw. And to be honest, I'm just praying that they don't take the tag belts off her and Tamina. Yeah, I am as well. When they say there's going to be a, an update, that kind of is where your head goes with that. It is, um, yeah. And it's kind of like, well, maybe maybe there'll be an update where it's like, well, Tamina's going to get like a, a, a choose your own tag partner thing every week, maybe for a few weeks. That'd be nice. That'd be nice. Don't strip oh, them of the belts, please. <laughs> that would be fun. But yeah, don't strip them of the belts. The only way that could kind of work into a, you know, turn negative into a positive is if they used it as a chance to introduce some new desperately needed teams. Yes. Oh, well, I mean, that would be nice, wouldn't it? Add a little bit of depth there to the women's tag division. It's not like it's needed it for so long. <sighs> we can, but pray. We can, but pray. <laughs> Sam, you look, you look stressed talking about the women's tag team division. Do you need a break? <laughs> Well, that is it for news video one of the day. As always, though, when I'm on with Mitch, Mitch is our editor-in-chief on the site. So I'm going to pass over to him now just for some little interesting tidbits and info on what's up there and things he thinks everybody should check out. What you got this week, Mitch? Well, it's it's been a weird week on the website, not in a bad way. It's just I actually took a bit of time off at the start of the week, so I left the guys <laughs> I left the guys to it, and you know the inmates ran the asylum. I don't yes, mean that; they're yeah. all absolutely lovely. Um, but as you may have heard, Sam, there's been a little rumour doing the rounds that a certain CM Punk and a certain Brian Danielson yes. may be, uh, Just might may be. be heading... Yeah, I, I, don't, I don't think many people have heard about it. It's only been a little one. But we let, uh, we let the lovely Jack King run riot with a, uh, a feature earlier this week, looking at what that could mean for AEW, for wrestling as a whole. Awesome. It's a really nice piece. Go and check it out. And of course, as everyone knows, we now have quizzes on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Uh, five quizzes <laughs> a week at five o'clock. Go and check them out because they're a lot of fun. Awesome. Well, I've been Sam. He's been Mitch. We'll catch you next time. We've got another video coming up in just a little bit. See ya. See you in a bit.